Hello everyone, in this video I will be sharing some free Japanese reading resources that I have found to be very helpful. I'll leave a link to every website I mention in this video down below. So without further ado, let's start. So the first one is NHK News Web Easy. The NHK is the news broadcasting station owned by the Japanese government and they created this website called News Web Easy where they publish simplified versions of news articles on their main website. It's kind of like the simple English version of Wikipedia. So these articles also come with furigana and audio which is really helpful. I I do have to say though that the audio is auto-generated so it does kind of sound unnatural but it's nothing I would call really bad or awful. It just takes a bit of time getting used to. In any case I found the articles on the website to be very clear and short so they are a great resource especially if you are looking to incorporate more Japanese into your daily life. Now, moving on, for classic literature, I would highly recommend Aozora. It's essentially the Japanese version of the Gutenberg project. So this site is an archive of Japanese literature that is now in the public domain. So anything written by an author who died before the end of 1950. So I had to use this website for one of my courses at university. We had to read about five modern short stories and my experience is that it takes some time getting used to reading this type of literature because of course a language can change a lot in 70 years and so I found myself struggling a lot at first with the use of archaic kanji and grammar and on top of that, it's literature, so depending on the author, there can be heavy use of very flowery and rich language, making it even harder to comprehend. So my advice here is to look for short stories, poetry and or children's literature. Preferably also try and scope out the author beforehand, try and see if there are any English translations available of their work so you can get a feel of their writing style. For instance, I would highly recommend you try out some of Dazai Osamu's short stories. Compared to other authors I have read or attempted <laughs> to read, I have found his writing to be very modern and clear. Most of his sentences aren't too grammatically complex, so I find this to be a great place to start reading original classic Japanese literature. What's more is that quite some of his work has been translated to the English. So if you're unsure about what you are reading, you have the opportunity sometimes to refer to these translations. And also, I think he's like a really good author. I personally really really like his work and I'm often moved by it so definitely a top recommendation. Anyway my final tip for reading classic literature would be to use an extension such as Rikaikun to help you quickly get the meaning of kanji and words you're not familiar with. So I'll leave a link to that extension in the description box below. Now if you would like to spice things up a bit more, you can also use Aozora Rodoku and this is the audiobook version of Aozora. So again, Japanese literature that is in the public domain but now read aloud by volunteers. Naturally, there are less pieces available there than on Aozora but there's still a lot and so I think it's a great resource. Then there's this website called the Soseki Project. Soseki Natsume is one of Japan's most celebrated authors and this site is dedicated to his work. The website freely offers several of Soseki's works, generally in four versions. So the original one with extensive furigana, an English translation and also a Japanese audio recording. I don't think the creator is planning to add more works to the site, but currently the novels Bochan, uh, Kokoro, Sanshiro and I Am A Cat are available, as well as a handful of short stories. 
And then we have one of my favorite resources, namely Bookwalker. And I should note that <laughs> I'm not sponsored by them. So Bookwalker is essentially an ebook division of Kadokawa, which is a huge Japanese publisher. They offer manga, light novels and novels. And the neat thing about them is that they will often offer some of their pieces for free. Sometimes you only get to read them for free for for a limited amount of time and sometimes you can just actually keep them. The reason why I in particular like them is because they don't just offer you know the unpopular titles for free. Often what they'll do is when a manga is getting an anime adaptation they will offer the first or first couple of volumes to you for free. I know they've done this with Komi, Tokyo Revengers, Blue Period and a bunch of other ones and they have this coin back system where you can get huge savings if you buy manga at a particular time so I would highly recommend them. I <laughs> go to the website almost every day and just try and see like what type of new offers are on their page and uh, it, it's very exciting and I've been able to read lots of great titles because of them. Now finally I would like to recommend manga magazines. So what many of these will do is that on their websites they will offer one or more of the first and most recent chapters in a series for free. Kind of like what Viz Media does for their Shonen Jump titles. So if you start reading a series from its inception and keep up with it weekly, you can read the entire series without actually having to pay anything. Alternatively, you can get the magazine's app. Now, many of these apps have these um, how would you call them? Ticketing systems where you get a ticket every day you open the app and that ticket allows you to unlock one of their chapters. So if you want to catch up with a series and want to do so in a legal way uh, but also not pay, uh, you can just drop into the app each day and read one chapter until you've caught up um, so I've done that, for instance, with Tokimeki no Kenya by Uguisu Sachiko. And yeah, it, it really does work. <laughs> um, I mainly use Pocket Manga and Young Jump, but I would also recommend checking out Shonen Jump Plus or Manga Plus from Asahi Sonorama. There are also websites that have entire series that they'll offer for free, like, uh, for instance, the website Comic Pool. There is one thing, however, I would like to note when it comes to these apps in the case of Apple users is that you will have to change your App Store location or App Store to the Japanese one. Otherwise, you won't be able to, you know, get these apps because that's the only store they're offered in. So. That is everything for this video. I really hope it was helpful. In any case, thank you very much for watching. If you want to support my channel, you can check out my Patreon or my coffee page. Uh, it really helps a lot. And yeah, that's everything for me. A special thank you to my patrons as always. And I hope to see you in another video soon. Cheers.